Okay, so welcome to World of Concrete 2022. We've been doing uh, recordings all day uh, yesterday and today, and uh, we decided that we wanted to talk with our own CEO, Spencer Loveless, because uh, we want to get a little bit of an idea of the vision for Dustless Technologies, and I think we're gonna we're, we're gonna also talk about Merit 3D and what's going on there. But let's let's start first with World of Concrete. The question that I want to know is, how many years have you been coming to World of Concrete? <laughs> it's been a lot. It has and, been a lot. And if you need to, you know, count on your fingers and uh, you know think about it for a couple minutes, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be okay. But yeah, how many how many years have you been coming to World of Concrete? I would say probably about 15, 20, 15, 20 ish. Okay. Yeah. Have you hit every single World of Concrete? Uh, I think almost all of them. Yeah. Okay. Besides when I was young and had to be. Drug around in diapers, but yeah. Yeah, because you're only 15 or 20 years That's old? right. Yep. Uh, okay, so perfect. Okay, in that 15 or 20 years, what have you noticed with this show in particular? Any any big changes? Like, what's what's the direction you're seeing that the show's starting to move? Do you think it's, you know, improving, uh, you know? I, I think the industry's, I mean, it's, there's technology that's evolving in it, but I think it's a very mature industry. Sure. I mean, it's... There's a couple years that we that we went crazy and we're like, what if we what if we built the the stand with vacuums? And so we actually took vacuums and we modeled up columns and columns and we <laughs> put a board across and we had vacuum boxes up top. And people walk by and they're like, wow, is that are there real vacuums in those boxes? And it's like, oh no, you dummy, it's empty boxes. <laughs> but I mean, as far as you know. A lot of the same players are here. There's not a lot of technology and concrete, but yet there is. I mean, yeah. there's there's a booth that we're gonna go check out in a little bit. That's a that's 3D printing concrete. Uh huh. So, yeah. There's different evolutions with just building building materials in general. Cool, cool. So, uh, let's talk about the company or the companies because so Dustless Technology has been around for what 30 years, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then Merit 3D launched just over a year ago. Let's start with Dustless Technologies. So Dustless Technologies uh, started out doing ash vacuums, used that same filter technology to get into, you know, kind of advanced filtration for drywall dust and concrete dust, uh, hence the world of concrete. So what do you see as the future for dustless technologies? It's an immature industry. You know, what are some things that you see moving forward, uh, you know, as CEO of the company? Um, moving forward, I see a lot of innovation in the way manufacturing is done. I mean, every, every company here, we have companies from India, we have a lot of Chinese companies, there's companies from Sweden, and all those companies, uh, they, most of them use the, sa- use the same manufacturing processes. Yeah. And so a lot of vacuums are metal. And you're like, oh, why are they metal? Well, metal is very inexpensive to prototype in, also very inexpensive to manufacture in. Mm-hmm. You have our, our vacuum, what we have back here behind us, and those molds cost almost a million dollars just for that one vacuum. Yeah. And so plastic versus metal, you have your manufacturing technologies. And so a lot of the technologies that, that Dustless is going to improve on are how are things made. You know, we've used injection molding for, you know, decades when it's the technology's been around for over 100 years. Yeah. But it's a very long and a tedious process, but it's proven and it works. Mm-hmm. And so how can we manufacture better, faster, and be more agile to customers' needs without the, he- the huge overhead of, of expensive tooling? Now, now, that's really the backdrop to why you launched Merit 3D was just all the frustrations with the manufacturing side of dustless technology. Yeah, exactly. So Merit 3D, uh, you know, additive manufacturing, 3D printing is what most people are going to call it. Mm-hmm. So uh, you launched uh, just over a year ago. And what have you seen in that, you know, in that time frame uh, in terms of like the technology itself, kind of your journey and the company's journey and starting up, what are some of the things that you've seen in that period of time? I would say that a lot of the materials are brand new. Like a material that we're using today didn't even exist six months ago. Mm-hmm. So materials, there's a lot of advancement materials. There's a lot of advancement in like mass production. People want to produce in mass and they want to do it now. It's the Amazon philosophy of next day shipping, right? Sure, yeah. And it's the same with the manufacturing. Next day manufacturing. Right now with the, with the pandemic, how long does it take to get products? 
Oh, uh, easily six months that used to be 90 days. Yeah, and, and so it's how can you get a product, how can you design it, develop it, and produce it within weeks rather than months or even years? Yeah, so my brother-in-law, he actually works in the parts department for Honda, and they have a board of parts that are over a year, and they just keep adding you know, parts that they have not been able to get for over a year, and they're keeping track of that now because it's just so bad. So, I mean, when you're talking about, like, how long does it take to get parts? I'm like, yeah, sometimes it's just you don't even know if you're going to get them anymore. Like, yeah. they're, they're just. And, and so many companies just like just like us, they're, they're buying on, on the IFCOM. Like, well, we, we're going to buy out, you know, 18 months because we don't want to be the one that runs out of product. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so then what happens to their cash flow? Their cash flow just tanks right. because they have all this money either sitting in, in promises inventory. or inventory on the water or hopefully it'll arrive. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's a, it's a very risk, risky, uh, risky challenge for businesses, and the small business is even worse. Like yeah. They don't have those deep pockets that they can just dive into. Yeah. So, okay, 3D printing, advanced manufacturing, this is not anything unique to Merit. Uh, you know, lots of people. In fact, everyone now has a 3D printer down in their basement, and mm-hmm. you know, and they're printing stuff. So, 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 what? What's the big deal here? Why? Why is this something to care about? To get excited about? Uh, you know, why? Why can't I just you know buy a 3D printer and you know, print my own parts? You can. Do you have a 3D printer? I do have a 3D you printer. You can print your own parts. I don't think so <laughs> because it's it's not going to hold up. It's the, you know like no, you're right. So kind of when we when we started looking into it, we said, what does the consumer want? Like yeah. The consumer doesn't care whether it's 3D printed or injection molding. Correct. Molded, but it's really that manufacturing dilemma of we have to have the right cost. The consumer's only going to pay so much. So you have to have the right quality, and you have to scale it. You know, you can print one or two pieces per day at your house. What if someone sells to Depot, Home Depot, and they need 10,000 pieces? Right. Or Walmart right. or wherever they yeah, sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how can you scale that up with the right quality with the right quality, and the right cost? And mm-hmm. so that's kind of the areas that we're focusing on is, is how can we sell and how can we get the right products to the consumer or to the manufacturer so they have that agility to manufacture whatever. They can change their design whenever they want and just hit the print button and go. So... How many printers does uh, Merit 3D own right now? And like, how many printers are you using? So we have, uh, I mean, we have well over 50 printers. Uh, I would say maybe half of those are just really industrial printers that are just uh-huh. workhorses. Okay, okay. Now, so. uh, you've got a goal next week. 60,000 parts in one day. Yeah. Okay. Ta- talk to us about that goal. Like, like what inspired the goal? What? Why are you doing it? I mean, that's a big jump. 60,000 printed parts in a single day. What's going on here? So there's a, so the company is Alaska Guy Creations out of Price, okay. right out of Price, Utah. Mm-hmm. And they, just like us, have that same problem. They have to go to China for their products or the mold's expensive or whatever the, whatever the issue is. But they came to us and they said, hey, can you print this little bracket? We said, yeah, we can print them. So we printed 150. They're like, we actually like this. Like, this will work for our product. We sell the Sportsman's, you know, mass chain throughout the country. They sell to many other retailers. So then they ordered 5,000 of them. The customers loved them. They ordered 25,000, and we were like, wow, how are we going to print 25,000 of these? Uh-huh. And, and we did it. You know, it took about a week to do it. Okay. And then they ordered 60,000. We're like, wow, this is the biggest order we've ever got, 60,000 3D printed pieces. And so we took it back to the team. We said, what do you think? How quick can we print it? started crunching some numbers and we're like we can print it in a day they're like optimal optimal uh, situation we can print it in a day so we're like challenge accepted let's try it so eight in the morning to four in the afternoon hopefully at four in the afternoon we're delivering you know manufacturing manufactured to delivery in eight hours uh, that'll be crazy like if you can pull that off you know, that's that's the game change that you're looking for with advanced manufacturing, with 3D printing. Like, that, yeah. that's it right there. And, and it all ties back into Dustless because Dustless has the same need mm-hmm. that all these other manufacturers have. How do I design a product, develop a product, and get it in my consumer's hands very, very quickly? And as soon as they say, but I need it a little bit different, and then you say, oh, we'll change it, we'll, we'll print it, we'll manufacture it, and boom, it's yeah. in your hands. Yeah. Wow. Like, that's, that's speed. Awesome. Awesome. So, 
You've been listening. This is the CEO of Dustless Technologies. I'm Ryan Murray, the uh, sales marketing uh, director here at Dustless Technologies. We've just been chatting back and forth about some of the vision, uh, you know, direction that we're going. Any final thoughts or anything that uh, that, that you want to share? I'm uh, grateful that we have the opportunity to make things in the U.S. I'm grateful for, you know, the it's that American dream. You have so many people that come to America that have, you know, they're, they're foreigners, they want to own property, they want to own a business, and they can. Mm. And it's, you know, there's a lot of resources in America to drive businesses and even small businesses that aren't available throughout much of the, uh, much of the world. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, it's a, it's a great economy. You know, there, there are some issues, some setbacks, but, you know, life is good. Good. Okay, cool. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be doing more recordings and uh, interviews throughout the day. Thanks. Thanks.